The Angels' offense was offensive on Wednesday night against the Dodgers. Shohei pitched an incredible game, and the Halos lost Gio Urshela for what looks like the rest of the season. So what do they do now? Well, we've got some answers for you. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. And the same goes with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, Head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with the eBay Guarantee Fit at ebaymotors.com. The eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. Hey, my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. We, we appreciate the opportunity to talk Angels baseball with you Monday through Friday, every single weekday. And we're glad that you're here with us again. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you're on the podcast side, uh, come on over to YouTube and hit that button too. And and uh, you can listen to us on audio while you're doing dishes or driving to work. And then you can see our, our friendly faces, our big friendly faces over here on YouTube and hit that subscribe button as well. Hey, Mike, uh, you know, on today's show, we're going to be talking about that Dodgers game last night, of course. What do we do? What in the world do we do now that Gio Urshela is probably out for the season? And we're going to have ourselves a conversation about convincing an A's fan to join this A team, the Angels <laughs> A team. Yeah. Put in my hat there if you're on the audio side. Let's chat about that Dodger game first. The Angels lost again, two to nothing. You and I are not allowed to make any predictions <laughs> for like a month, yeah. like until the All Star break, because we're like, oh, we we could sweep them. And it should be yeah, why not? They're out, they're down on their luck. They just got beat by the Giants, and and we'll come into this series. No, we're done. You and I <laughs> cut us off. We're done. Got it. Deal. Yeah, they lost two nothing. And good news is that they had two incredible pitching performances. Reed Detmers. Yeah. Uh, on Tuesday night and then Wednesday night, Shohei Otani, seven innings, 12 strikeouts, the most mm -hmm. strikeouts by an Angels pitcher against the Dodgers. And so Shohei is now just checking all the boxes to make sure that all of the Angel records are his and his alone. Mm -hmm. Gave up just five hits, walked to 102 pitches, second most pitches thrown so far this season. Johnny, he used his sweeper uh hey. as his third pitch on wednesday night not as, as as his primary pitch and he generated a lot of swings and misses on five of those nine he had swings and misses which was great uh the angels just didn't have any offense john they had two mm -hmm. hits both of them were louis renjifo they've gone <laughs> of course they were <laughs> straight innings without scoring a run johnny and it's just a frustrating game to watch and it was really frustrating on wednesday night not as frustrating on Tuesday because Clayton Kershaw, you just tip the cap, right? Hall of Famer. You could he's understand a, great, losing to Kershaw, yep. but you can't, you, I, in what were, I can't understand losing to the 29th ranked bullpen words, in a Johnny, bullpen game. <laughs> God, man. I, I know. Just, I know. Good grief. Well, like, in that five ERA, like we, we had talked about when we previewed this series that, Hey, if you get to the bullpen, it actually would be a really positive thing for the halos, but they had a bullpen game against them last night. And Phil Nevin was quoted after the game. And he said, it's really hard to go into every inning with a brand new pitcher. I get that. However, this bullpen has not been good. And the angels just couldn't generate anything on the base pass. In fact, when Renjifo tried to score on that, I guess kind of like weak fly ball to left mm -hmm. field. I totally get that. I, I totally get, get why they sent him because we weren't scoring any runs and you need to kind of be aggressive in those moments. Unfortunately, both times that we were aggressive, it didn't go in our direction. In fact, when they were looking at the replay to see if they were going to challenge it, they said, no, they're not. And Marcus Thames he said a bad word and then he hit the top of the dugout because <laughs> he was just, you could tell he was really, really frustrated. The angels just couldn't do anything in this game. Yeah, even uh, Gooby and, and Wayne Randazzo on the broadcast were like, well, you know, even if they send it to New York, it's probably not going to go their way. So, <laughs> <Hey -o. laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Mike, yeah. I, I just can't understand how you can't deliver against this bullpen. And and for Phil Nevin to say, well, it's really hard to to have a different pitcher every time. doesn't matter. These yeah. guys, these guys are not having 
good at bats. They're not having good uh, approaches at the plate. And it doesn't matter who's in there. And you you adjust to that. I mean, if 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 that were the excuse all the time, then this would be a regular thing for teams to run out yeah. of bullpen game, right? And right. and so it's just you got to be strategic. You got to know your enemy. If if us nerds can do it on Lockdown Angels and be like, hey, you know what? Shohei should approach uh, Freddie Freeman this way and Will Smith this way. I had I had to say like I I tweeted it out. It was really fun to see Shohei strike out Will Smith yeah. on ninety eight because. We looked at the data and went, hey, I bet you he could get Will Smith to strike out on the fastball. That's exactly what he did. And and that's why Shohei was so good. He he had a game plan. And so for, on the flip side, if you if you don't have a game plan against the worst bullpen in the league, I'm not even going to count the A's as the worst bullpen in the league because it's not their fault. This is the worst bullpen in the league, and there's just no excuse to only have two hits, both of which came from Luis Renjifo. Mike, yeah. I, had a, I had a thought. Can yeah. we just trade Luis Renjifo to the Dodgers – and then he can be a 320 hitter and an all-star and, and a <laughs> yeah, gold glover in the infield because that's what would happen if Luis Renjifo was on that team. So I, I, I'm frustrated, as you can tell. I, I'm at a loss for words for what happened. And, you know, we were getting a little flack about how the other day when you mentioned, you know, hey, that Royals game, it was a good loss in the sense that it kind of grounded the Angels. And then people said, well, you still think it's a good loss? Yeah, because mm-hmm. what does what does a bad bullpen game have anything to do with this terrible offense the last two days? Show me the connection because I don't see it. And one thing has nothing to do with the other, other than these guys came out with with no approach. And Mike, I, I also have to say, I feel like now that our depth is being tested, and we're going to yes. get into this conversation a little bit later. Yeah, um, we're we're right back to where we thought we'd be. Once we lost Gio Urshela and once we yeah. lost Rendon and lost once we lost Zach Neto, we're, we're right back to where we thought we'd be. Yeah, that six through nine was terrible. And and I know that the top of the lineup should perform, but yeah, the one through three was terrible. too. Right. So. <laughs> but that, that bottom that bottom half of the lineup is like what 2022 was for us. And I was thinking about this uh, as I was watching the game last night. And then when they lost, I remember like earlier this year, there were games where top of the lineup didn't come through but then you would see somebody like a chad wallach or a zach netto or Mm -hmm. a geo or shella have a couple of hits and get some runs scored or make something happen on the bases to where the top of the lineup could have an opportunity to knock them in Mm -hmm. we just don't have that i mean we have triple a guys at the bottom of the lineup remember the stat last year we had 1800 plate appearances plus with people that were like zero war which is not even an average and 1,800 players with zero war is what it felt like last year. <laughs> It did feel like that, right? And so, yeah, I, I, we really feel the weight of that gap in the bottom of the lineup. And I, you know, gosh, it, I was so frustrated when I saw Michael Stefanik get, uh, have a pinch hit last night. And I was like, where was he the night before, Phil? Like, he, he could have come up for Velasquez in that moment yeah. as well. Learned and your then, lesson a little too late. And, <laughs> and then he has probably one of the best at bats of the night. He draws yeah. a walk. He looks really great. And, and that's, and then he goes, in the and then he goes in at third base. Like, why isn't he at third base? That's the question game? I have too, is, is why <laughs> isn't he playing more? Like, I, I think he should be in there and I think he yeah. should be in there a little bit more often. In fact, if I'm going to adjust this, this lineup a bit, I think I'm putting Brandon Drury at first base and I'm putting sure. Stefanik at second base and I'm having Renjifo play third and I'll, I'll put Velasquez at short. I might move some of those pieces around a little bit more as well, but I, I think while she's got to either sit for a while or, or, or be sent down, I know that you and I had talked a lot about him figuring it out at the major league level. He just doesn't give you a quality at bat anymore. And why not have Stefanik in there? I mean, the guy has been incredible at AAA. Let's let's see what he can do now on the major league roster because he's at least got a good bat, and that's what we desperately need right now, Johnny. Well, listen, you know, we have the off day today. The Angels are 41 and 35. I know this series sucked, and, and fortunately it was a sucked. two-game series. We have the opportunity to, to get those wins back next month in Los Angeles. And uh, you can bet that uh, there's going to be some Angel fans there. Maybe maybe I'll even go. Maybe me and my wife will even go to those games. Hmm. We'll go into enemy territory, Mike, just, right. to, just to show our support. And you know the Super Halo Bros have a perfect record this season. And, yeah, hold on to your butts. Games, watch, so. watch what happens when you show up. <laughs> and uh, the, other, the other aspect of that is that the Angels are going to be taking on the Rockies this weekend. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be, I think, advan- advantageous to us. 
I want to see I want to see Shohei hit a home run out of course field. Right. Uh, that's just what I want to see. Yeah. Um, they're they're playing the Rockies on Friday at 540 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels and coming up on Locked on Angels. Sounds like Gio Urshela is going to be out for the season. What now? What do we do? What's next for the Halos? We'll talk about that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is a clothing company that's all about your comfort, like their stretch khaki shorts, for example. They fit way better than regular shorts because they aren't made of stiff, restricting cotton. Johnny, I put mine on the other day, and I walked out into the living room, and I said, honey, these Bird Dog shorts are made of cloud knit fit wonderful fabric and 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 it really looks good on me doesn't it and i posed for her she didn't think it was very funny uh but they give you <laughs> a, sure a really that. they give you a really good slim fit without having to sacrifice movement and they also have anti-stink and sweat fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long so whether you're on the golf course at a meeting on a date or hanging out with friends or watching the angels bird dogs pants and shorts work for you everywhere so check out birddogs.com slash locked on mlb to get yourself a pair of pants and shorts and when you do use our promo code locked on mlb be and bird dogs will throw in a free custom style bird dogs yeti style tumbler with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on mlb use our promo code locked on mlb once again birddogs.com slash locked on mlb go there today thanks for making locked on angels your first listen of the day locked on every day we got a fan mail friday coming tomorrow And we need your questions and we need your smart fan takes on how the halos are going to finish up the rest of the first half of the season. The all-star break is kind of the, the spiritual half of the season. It's not exactly, you know, uh, 80, 80, so 81 games, right? It's, it's kind of a little bit more than that, but it is the halfway point for a lot of us. And we want to know what you think and how they're going to finish the first half. Hey, the angels are playing those Rockies on Friday at five 40 Pacific time. Make sure you catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Johnny, Sarah Valenzuela of the LA Times and friend of the pod tweeted out some news about Gio Urshela yesterday. Uh, She said after meeting with another specialist, Urshela won't need surgery for his pelvis fracture, which is good news. But since he needs to be shut down for at least six weeks and with six weeks of buildup after that, it seems like Urshela's season is done now Mm -hmm. this was coming from phil nevin so i don't believe it at all however (laughs) i know that that geo is not going to be in the lineup and that's frustrating and that's heartbreaking because he's been so good for us Mm -hmm. now by our count september 18th is six weeks and then six weeks uh of of like amping back up and so maybe geo can return if mm-hmm. we're in playoff contention if we're battling for a, a wild card spot maybe even the aos that'd be great be nice to have him back we're going to talk about some of the options with these angels right now and, and who's on the roster but before we do that johnny let's just take a look at who geo or has been for the halos this season yeah this season he's batting 299 he's got a 329 on base percentage 374 slugging And a 703 OPS. And that 299 average is great. The other stats, they're fine. But I think here's here's the kicker, Mike, is what he's been able to do when he puts the ball in play. Yeah. First of all, he scored 22 runs, so he's been on base a lot. 24 RBIs on his own. Um, In situations where there's two outs and there's runners in scoring position, Mike, he's got a 353 batting average, uh, one double, one home run, and 10 RBIs in late and close situations, a 292 average, and in tie game situations when he comes to the plate, he's batting 311. Hmm. Uh, change a lot and then some 311. <laughs> Sorry, nice, um, nice call. Hopefully, I don't get uh, like uh, you know in trouble for that. Um, because yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, Mike. It, it with Gio Rochella, it's all about making contact in those big moments, and according to Statcast. He ranks in the 85th percentile in Mm. K percentage. So he wasn't striking out a lot. Uh, 82nd percentile in whiff percentage. So he's not swinging and missing a lot either. And and here's the biggest thing. This season, he's played a lot of first base. He's played a lot of third base. Yeah. Even played some shortstop. And this is the problem is is with Rendon being out as much as he's been. Urshela was super necessary over at third base. So... Where does this put the Angels 
right now in this situation without Gio Urshela? I think that it actually causes them to maybe consider like who's going to be at third, who's going to be at first. Obviously, mm-hmm. Rendon is going to come back, but you really have to wonder how long he'll be back before maybe something else happens. And of course, he's getting regular days off. And, and so, he gets in a fight and gets suspended. Right, exactly. And, yeah. uh, I know Brandon Drury was brought over. He's really good at second base. He's played some first base. Johnny, uh, at third base, his uh, UZR, which is his ultimate zone rating, kind of measures all of his defense, is negative 0.7 at third across five, uh, sorry, 513 innings in 2022. So he's he's not fantastic. In fact, he's probably a whole lot better. In, not probably. He is a whole lot better at second base. And, and I think that he probably needs to stay there or at first base. I, I, again, I mentioned the first segment. I think I'd just keep him there, especially mm-hmm. with Walsh and his, his struggling bat. Um, Johnny, I think that with Urshela gone, it would be wise to have somebody who's similar to him. Maybe he can make mm-hmm. a lot of contact and can knock in some runs. I'm trying to think of somebody who was really hmm. good with runners in scoring position over the last few years. Yeah. Down in the minor leagues be? right now, not on the 40-man roster. It would be... David Fletcher, right? Why don't you talk about David? <laughs> Listen, they need a contact guy. They need an on-base guy. And and is this the moment where they finally bring David Fletcher back? Listen, I think that there's some weird uh, puppetry going on, Mike, in terms of pulling the strings with yeah. David Fletcher and his service time. Yeah. There's there's conflicting like suggestions of, well, he's in the minor leagues because if he hits a, f- a few more weeks of service time, then he gets his contract in full, the, the contract that he signed. But because he's not quite at that five-year service point yet, if he walked away from the team, then he would miss out on the remainder of that money. So I think now is the time to stop messing around with David Fletcher and bring him back to this team. Mm. I, I understand that you know there's a question of can he perform at the major leagues, but here's what he's done so far in, in AAA – He's he's batting 380. Wow. He's got a 432 on base percentage. He's got a 458 slugging and an 890 OPS. Now, if you want to take into consideration that maybe those numbers are a little bit inflated because of Salt Lake and the altitude and he's hitting better up there, sure. But but if you took 100 points off of those those off of his slash line in each category, a 280 average. So it uh, looks good. Yeah, it's still it looks good. And 100 po- 100 points is being like generous, right? right? That's that's a lot of points to take off. Right. I don't think it would drop that much. And then the other option, Mike, is is obviously we know he's a great second baseman. He's capable of playing shortstop. Yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a problem because we're hopeful that Zach Neto will be back in a few weeks. And then there's third base. He hasn't played third since 2020, but in 2019 he had 665 innings at third base. And he had a positive 5.2 ultimate zone rating. Again, the ultimate zone rating, which compiles all of those defensive metrics and says, here's a good number to demonstrate how good they are at a position. So again, if Brandon Drury in 2022 has a negative 0.7 at third base across 513 innings last year, then I'll take Fletcher's 665 innings at third yeah. base yeah. In, in 2019. I know it's been a few years, but... I think it's time to, to to quit messing around with David Fletcher. Give him a chance. Put him on this roster. Even if it's not an everyday position, he still has something to contribute, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he does. And I think that he's very like similar to Gio Urshela. And because he's great defensively, I think that that's really what the Angels are looking for. It's why they brought up Squid to play shortstop because they didn't want to lose what Zach Neto brought to the shortstop position. And you know, Velasquez made an incredible play at short. Uh, in the series against the Dodgers. So I think that that's probably the wisest decision. I don't think Stefanik's the guy. I think Stefanik's a second baseman. He's more of an offensive guy anyway. Mm -hmm. Got a great slash line in AAA. And Renjifo, I I just don't think that he's the guy that you want in there all the time either, although he does play a good, solid backup third base, right? And so if you do bring up Fletcher, I think that Renjifo is going to be the third baseman and Fletcher will probably be the shortstop and maybe shift in and out with Velasquez. But I think that the, the, the wisest thing here, Johnny, it would seem outside of making a trade, and that's a whole other conversation, I think the wisest thing for the Halos to, to do here is to have Fletch come up because Fletch is a guy that is good for this team and he's a guy that can make contact and he's a guy that can 
flip the bat and move runners over. He's great with runners in scoring position, or at least has a history of that. And I think the Fletch that we've seen in the last year and a half at the major league level is a guy who's been hurt and is a guy who's trying to figure it back out again. And I think he's shown to at least figure something out in the minor leagues. And so mm-hmm. why not give him a shot? Why not bring him back up? And you can put him back on the 40 man roster and have Gio be on the 60 day IL. So it wouldn't be a, a, a huge, like traumatic move. It wouldn't mess yeah. too many things up. Yeah. Everything that you liked about Gio Urshela, and this is me speaking to, you know, our lockdown every day or everything that you liked about Gio Urshela, a healthy David Fletcher is capable of. And I think he's proving that in triple a now, Another thing that the Angels can do is go outside the organization. Mike, I'd like to see somebody who is major league ready and not somebody who you're like, "Eh, it's kind of a question mark. Like at the end of the day, David Fletcher to me, question mark. I don't know how he's going to perform at the majors again. He's obviously having success in the minors, but major league stuff is a question mark. So the Angels have the ability to find somebody who's not a question mark, and that's through a trade, maybe a corner outfielder because third base and first base is an area that they really need. However, I think that's a conversation that you and I need to dive into a bit deeper. It's worth spending some time on. So we'll save that conversation for another time, just in terms of, you know, who are some potential targets that the angels could go for. And then maybe even look at, you know, Daniel Murphy. Uh, He's, he's another option that the angels have in the minor leagues. He just joined salt Lake. I think he went two for five in his first game. So that's also a possibility, but Mike and I will get into those possibilities here in the future. At the moment, we just wanted to look at in-house to see what the angels can do. Johnny, as we finish the show here, we want to talk about something that happened just a couple of days ago. We had a comment on YouTube. Danny West commented and said, guys, I'm an ace fan looking for a new team. Can't do the Dodgers. You're, you're already like like a part of us now. You're uh, halfway there. Right. I uh, always love Mike Trout, just blown away by Shohei Otani. And and I don't I want to do this right. And then I love this. I don't want to be on rebound and sleep around. <laughs> I wanna <laughs> I wanna find a right team. I've been an ace fan my entire life. I just don't know if I can do this. So let's help him be a Halo fan and give him some things that he needs to be aware of. Johnny, could I could I start just Please because do. it's fresh in my mind because of what happened last night? Mm-hmm. I just want to let Danny know that he needs to ignore and and avoid the angel trolls. There's two there's two levels of trolls on social <laughs> media, specifically on Twitter. There is the trolls who are the ones that think that they created the tungsten arm O'Doyle tweets. Um, <laughs> and and if you get a chance, Danny, you gotta you gotta Google search that because it's it's pretty funny when it first came out. It's not funny anymore to angel fans. Three years later, right? And so there's that troll, and then there are the trolls that say that they're angel fans that only come out when the angels lose and. Only only come out when they don't score runs against the Dodgers and only come out when they blow a lead, but never, ever, 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 ever say anything when the Angels take three or four from the Rangers or take two or three from the Royals. They only come out when the Angels look terrible. So, Danny, you just got to avoid them, ignore them. That block button on Twitter, fantastic. There's one more kind of troll, and it's the troll that, uh, you know, says they're an Angel fan and then they just spout nothing but like, Trout's going to swing and miss. Otani's going to blow it. <laughs> yes. He's going to strike out. Yes. And they do it They do it for clicks and they do it for bait because then people retweet them and they say, well, what now? Trout got a home run. What do you have to say? And, and they're just looking for engagement. So yeah. ignore those trolls as well. Yeah. Now, let's talk about some good stuff, Johnny. Here's what's good about being an Angel fan is when this team is good, they're a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun to be at Angel Stadium. And if you look back at what happened just the last two nights against the Dodgers, there were 40 plus thousand people there mm-hmm. uh, when the angels play uh, against West opponents, like the Rangers, even the A's and the Mariners. And, and when the Astros come to town, it's a blast because mm-hmm. it's filled. The stadium's filled even on a Tuesday, even on a Wednesday it's, it's filled. And so when the angels are actually in competition, they're competitive they're The fans come out and, and there's just a whole lot of fun to be there. And angel fans are really good at, supporting their their players maybe even i'm gonna say maybe they go too far sometimes <laughs> like, you know because i think sometimes we don't we don't uh maybe call them out or hold them accountable but the, the reason why you hear about trout and otani is because they're great but we love them and even in angel history like 
Vlad Guerrero is a guy that we love. Torrey Hunter, mm-hmm. who was for five years, we love. You even go further than that to the 90s. Chuck Finley, Mark Langston, Jim Abbott, Doug DeCinze in the 80s. Like We have all of these players that are just great guys that we've really enjoyed. And it wasn't because the Angels were this super team that won a lot of World Series. It was just because these guys endeared themselves to Halo fans. And so what you'll find in Anaheim and what you'll find rooting for the Angels is that we really like our players, even if they mm-hmm. make us really, really mad. We have our fan favorites, too. I mean, I think we just got done talking about Fletcher. Tons of people love Fletcher. Yeah. You and I are big fans of Jared Walsh, even though he's struggling at the plate right now, because we know his attitude and we know his mindset, and we know that he's coming off a really difficult off season. And then he's got a great glove at first base, and we know his ceiling as a potential all-star. He's really struggling right now, but you and I – Uh, he's endeared himself to angel fans. I believe just in the way that he goes out into the community, the way that he interviews all that stuff. We have our favorites, Mike, when they win, it's really fun. When they don't fans get really angry when they win, (laughs) the players get most of the credit. And when they lose, it's Phil Nevin or it's, Mike Sosha, fire Sosha. Right. Uh, I think there's still people on Facebook saying fire Sosha. <laughs> you're you're probably behind. right. <laughs> uh, the, it's it's the front office's fault. It's Artie's fault. Who get most of the blame when the Angels lose? And, and yeah. sometimes that's warranted. Sometimes it's like, okay, we've we've heard the song and dance before. Right. Um, uh, what I liked, Mike, was this comment from from Locked On Every Day or Torrid. Torrid's been around since we took over Locked On yeah, Angels. He's, he's great. A, we appreciate an awesome him so commenter much. all the way. Danny, from New no York. Torrid. That that'll be a helpful thing for you. <laughs> yes, he said. Uh, this is for Danny. He said, first thing you need is patience. Ultimately, it's a good team, but you have to wait for the meat to be cooked. When We uh, we have many good players, but a rookie manager. The team has heart, so as a fan, you should too. Don't give up on them. I love that. I think that's, that's a great. really great way of putting it. Again, rookie manager, some rookie players, and some veteran players. Uh, the team has heart. I agree with that. I think that they have a lot of fight in them. Um, even though they got shut out the last two nights, I think they're perfectly capable of, of turning that around and riding that ship. Hopefully they can do that this weekend as we head into the series against the Rockies. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And that series against the Rockies starts on Friday, 540 Pacific time. And you can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. If you're on YouTube, comment below the video. We love engaging with you there. And if you're on the audio side, come on over to YouTube, leave your comments and get in on the conversation. Mike, what do we have on deck for Friday's show? It's Fan Mail Friday, and we would love your smart fan takes on what the Angels will do as they get to the All-Star break. How many wins will they have? We'd love to hear your smart fan takes and what they should do with this situation with Gio Urshela, perhaps Mm -hmm. if they fill it in with David Fletcher, or if there are some names maybe out there that the angels could trade for pop it into that trade simulator and share that with us. We'll share all of that on Friday on locked on angels. We're looking forward to hearing from you our locked on every dayers until then. My name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us. And we'll see you back here for fan mail Friday tomorrow.